Hello and welcome to RTC TV4. Of course, I'm Scott Seger. Today I'm joined by Brett Boggs, Superintendent of Tippecanoe Valley Schools. We're going to sit with Brett for a few moments and uh, just kind of talk about his career over at Tippecanoe Valley as he's announced his retirement at the end of this year. So again, welcome to the show today. Morning, Scott. Thanks for having me. It was devastating news, I'm going to tell you that, <laughs> um, for more reasons than one, folks, but you have been an ardent supporter of everything we've been doing over there at Tippecanoe Valley Schools, and we're going to miss you as an advocate for us in our program, so I want to well, start off with right there. Thank you. It's a two-way street. You guys uh, here at RTC have been a wonderful partner for us over the years, and we appreciate everything that RTC has done for Tippecanoe Valley. Well, thank you. You guys are doing great things, and that's what we like to showcase, of course, on RTC4. Um, we've been doing that, oh, I don't know, five or six years off and on, pretty steady for the past few. Mm -hmm. That was, for the most part, my exposure to Tippecanoe Valley uh, started when, I, when we started filming with you guys, and you were an integral part of that. But you've been with the school system for how long now? Well, I went to school there. Yes, so, okay. Um, <laughs> you know, um, if you, I guess, count. Now, where'd my, you grow up? Well, I grew up um, just east of Palestine okay. on State Road 25, yeah. and uh, attended school at Burkett, Mentone, Talma, um, all three of those buildings. Okay. And then when I went to college, um, right uh, toward the end of my senior year, I was hired to teach at Akron. Okay. So my wife and I got married that summer and moved to Akron in the summer of 1978, and I've been there since. My goodness. Yeah. Where'd you go to school? Well, Grace College is Grace where College. I got my uh, bachelor's degree in, element, el excuse me, in elementary education. Uh, then went to Manchester and got a master's degree in elementary ed. I uh, got my principal's license from Ball State, okay. and then my EDS uh, educational specialist degree from Ball State. My goodness. So for the most part, even your education took place right up here in this area in it North did. Central Indiana. For the it did. Part. I um, was a commuter, so I lived at home yeah. during the time I went to Grace College. Uh, but yeah, my entire life, uh, almost my entire life has been at Tippecanoe Valley that in, is in one way or another. That, yeah. is, that has to be unique as well. Yeah, I don't think that happens much anymore, um, probably in the past. Um, it was more common than it yeah. is now. Yeah, well, yeah. he truly does bleed green and uh, yellow here. <laughs> green and gold. Green and gold. Yeah. Um, well, talk to us about, you got into teaching back in 78, you say? Yes. Mm -hmm. Started at the elementary level. I did. How, how long did you teach before getting into? Well, you know, it's kind of funny, Scott, how I got into that. Um, I didn't really, even when I went to college, I wasn't real sure what I wanted to do. Um, I had been asked my senior year by the principal at Mentone to to coach uh, an elementary basketball team, and I enjoyed that. I enjoyed, I know our, our basketball team, we had summer or Saturday camps with the younger kids. I enjoyed working with kids, and so I thought, well, maybe that's something I'd, I'd like to do. Um, so anyway, majored in elementary education. Um, in the spring of my senior year of college, I went down to interview for a, a position there at Valley, and um, actually was offered the position before I was out of college. So that was that was an answer to prayer. <laughs> so that my wife and I, um, we were getting married in July. We knew where we were going, uh, had an apartment to there in Akron. And uh, I taught fourth grade for seven years. During that time, I coached um, basketball and track. I was athletic director um, for a little bit of time. And then um, would have been that seventh year that I was, um, taking classes to become a principal, and I, I really was ready to become a principal. And mm -hmm. there had been some talk about creating a, um, a half-time or an assistant principal's job. Akron at that time was a K through eight, and we had probably 600 kids there yeah. and just one principal. And it was, uh, it was a pretty, pretty big job sure. for one person. And so I know that they'd been talking to the superintendent about creating a a half-time assistant position and so I had kind of waited on that um, nothing really happened so I started looking and had accepted a position with a little school up near Columbia City called Etna Troy yeah and um, I called my principal who was Dr. Kramer at that time and I informed him of what was going on and and uh, the next day he called me and I was down at Ball State at that time finishing up some classes and he said I would like to meet with you in uh, Marion which was about halfway so I drove up, he drove down, he had talked to the superintendent. They uh, were prepared to offer me a half-time uh, assistant principal's position that would, would go into a full-time position the following year. And um, 
Valley was really where my heart was, and yeah. that was where I wanted to stay. So I called the folks at Troy and, and said, I'm going to have to to renege on this and and have been at Valley ever since. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. That is great. Now, what year did you take over then as superintendent? Well, this is my 10th year. 10th so year. whatever that figures out right. to, what year Somewhere that was. around 2008. I was out there th three years as an assistant. Okay. And... Uh, and then I think um, I was a principal at Akron for about 17 years. Oh, excellent, yeah. excellent. Well, as part of RTC and being over in Tippecanoe New Valley Schools, I've gotten to lo know a lot of your uh, teachers, faculty, principals. Yeah. Um, we've gone through some heartaches over the past few oh, yeah. years. Uh, we've, we've done so with some of the student issues. We've had some academic, or, or excuse me, athletic heartbreaks as well through some of the sporting adventures. but. Uh, it is a school unlike any that I've seen. Uh, I, I, of course, went to Rochester, uh, proud zebra through and through. Um, those, that gold and uh, black colors that the zebras have didn't translate quite as well for me down at Indiana University as it might have had I gone to Purdue, but um, a lot of fun there. Good people. I have kids in the program. We're over there a lot. What I see over at Tippecanoe Valley, which is, by the way, one of the largest regions mm -hmm. uh, by which school or uh, that populate a school system. So the district, its vast size brings folks in from communities far and wide, so to speak. It is as close as any of the schools that, that we cover, that I've been in, that I've been around. Um, and that could not have been an easy thing to pull together from a bunch of different little communities. Mm -hmm. And yet the solidarity I see over at Tippecanoe Valley, the pure joy of, of education and the experience, I think I see that spark more at Tippecanoe Valley than I've seen at other schools. And again, that's not to belittle the other schools, it's to compliment Tippecanoe Valley on what you've been able to do. Again, from all these little bergs everywhere, all these kids coming together, uh, some of these kids are 40 minutes away from each other yeah. as the crow flies even. so. Um, what's it been like? What's the what's in the secret sauce over there at Tippecanoe <laughs> Valley? I know you have a lot of heart, and I yeah. know that your employees and your staff and your faculty they have a lot of heart. But there's something that's gelled over there very well for you. Maybe yeah. it is the small communities. I'm not sure. You're you're right. I mean, from West Haven Estates, which is just three miles from Warsaw, okay. to Athens, you know, at the southwest corner of our district, yeah. it's it's a big a big area. We cover a lot of space. You know, I, I, I can never speak to how it is in other places because I've never been anywhere else, Scott, so I don't know. But I do know that the people make the difference. Yeah. And uh, I always tell our principals that the most important thing that you do is hire. And you hire, I think the first thing you hire is character. Yeah. People that um, care about kids, people that um, you know have the level of integrity that I, I think that is very important in working with kids. Um, we're shaping the future when we work with children, and, yeah. and that's the, I think, the very rewarding part about what I do. So uh, there's a lot of folks that that care. I do like the small rural communities, the Akron's and the Mentones. Mm -hmm. You know, people do truly care about each other. They sincerely care about each other, mm -hmm. and they rally around each other when when the, the times are hard. Um, there are also aspects of a small community that sometimes aren't as desirable. I mean, everybody knows everybody in, they do. in their business they and do. those kinds of things. And um, that isn't always an advantage, but I think that the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. Uh, but the people make the difference. Um, you know, I, I just, uh, we have a lot of great kids there, um, great families, and it's just been a good place to live, good place to raise a family. I, I uh, have a lot of conversations with our seniors, especially. Mm. Just had one here earlier this week with a young lady that uh, I asked her what she wants to do. And she said, well, I'm going to be an elementary teacher. And I told her, I said, well, you go get your degree and then you come back and you work for us because she'll be a great teacher. She's a really good kid. And um, I said, you know, we, a lot of communities, a lot of rural communities have lost their best and their brightest kids because they have told them that if you're going to make anything out of your life, you're going to leave here. You're going to go somewhere else. And so I don't see it that way. I think we need our best and our brightest to come back and be part of that community, give back to the community that has given so much to you, and then help make it a better place. And yeah. one of the ways we do that is by hiring our graduates, mm -hmm. um, people from our community. And uh, I, I like to do that. I've always told our principals I would favor that if 
you know that they're going to be great. Mm -hmm. If they're not going to be great, stay away from them because if you have issues, you're dealing not only with the individual, you're dealing with the family and the community. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, and we've been pretty successful at growing our own, mm -hmm. um, and, and have a lot of our teachers now that are Valley grads that come back and you you know those folks, you, you know what they're made out of, you know that they're going to stay there, mm -hmm. and that they're going to be part of the fabric of that community and. You know, there's so many factors that I think go into the culture of a school corporation, but uh, I think those are probably some of them. That's excellent. Yeah. Excellent. We look at a couple of things. Number one, let's talk about your board for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten to know your board a little as, as we've filmed over the past few years. That board is heavily populated with Valley graduates oh, or, yeah. or even Akron graduates. Um, and some of these are, you know, in the last... Uh, election, if you will, there was some turnover, but they were local, mm -hmm. Tippecanoe Valley, oh, yeah. graduates who'd come back, some working at Pike, some working in Warsaw, some having their own family businesses. That's got to be a great example for the kids who are, you know, being administered by these folks. It is. I'm, I'm trying to think right now of our existing board, and I think they are, I believe they're all Valley grads. Yeah. Um, of course, we have each board member represents a different township. That's true, yes. So we've got some guys that are from the Mentone area, we've got some guys from the Akron area. Um, but yes, I believe that um, and our board president, Adam, is a Valley grad. Mm -hmm. Aaron Zolman is a Valley grad. Um, Brian Murphy, Todd Hoffman, and Stan Miller are all Valley grads. So all five of them are at this point in time. And But I think um, the reason for that is that they see this as a way of giving back yes. to the community. Um, you know, being a board member is not an easy job, um, and if people are in it for the right reasons, I think it can be a very rewarding job mm -hmm. as well. You can, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. have a, a pretty major impact on the future of a school corporation yeah. as a board member. But I think the people that are on our board right now, they're, they're there because they want the school to be the best it can be. Um, many times they have children in school, uh, so they have a, a vested interest in and what's going on there. Yeah. But uh, no, it's, I think that's a good thing. Excellent. Well, you do something that I don't see at any of the other board meetings that we cover. And you have students on your board. We do. Talk to us about how that got started <laughs> and, and, and how do you think that's worked out? Well, that started several years ago when Karen Bowling was the superintendent. And uh, I you know, wasn't involved in things at that level at that mm -hmm. time, so I'm not real sure what the reason was. But having known Karen, I think she probably wanted just to see students have a voice mm -hmm. in things and we probably don't do as good a job of involving them as we should sometimes but uh, um, they do have an opportunity at each board meeting to give a report on what's going on at the high school and, and there are times where we'll be discussing things and we'll say well what do you think about mm -hmm. this from a student's perspective and um, I, I like that I'm really glad they're involved um, I think it's a good thing for them it's obviously a good thing for their resume and I've encouraged uh, the leadership and other boards that I'm involved with to consider even high school kids on their board. Um, mm -hmm. You know, most of the boards that I sit on are, are people that are in their 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can get people when they're younger involved in leadership positions, the chance of keeping them in that area are, are better. Absolutely. Uh, I really appreciate Joe Koch and the people at. Uh, the Fulton County REMC, they have students that are on their board. Yeah. And he talks to me every time I see him about Gary Klingers, the young man from Valley that's on that board. And I know he's very impressed with Gary. And Gary, I mean, the learning that is happening for him is great. And those kids bring a different perspective. They mm -hmm. see things differently than, than we do. And I think that's good for us older folks yeah. to see what the kids are thinking. And, um, they can gain from us, we can gain from them. And uh, again, I think if we put them and give them those opportunities, they feel like they're a part of the community and the chance of them staying here is far greater. Absolutely, and that perspective is, it's very important. My teenager and I don't see things the same way, I guarantee you that. And so uh, yeah. to bring that to the board, to accept that into your board, I think that shows a lot of the uh, character and wisdom sitting on your boards. Um, We're in the kid business, yeah. I and mean, that's that's our business, and we, we should involve students in those kinds of a, things. A very neat thing. Now, one of the first things that uh, Mr. Boggs and I got involved with together with RTC was your distinguished alumni. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're seeing other schools in our area do similar things or offshoots of that, but you kind of led the way in our area at least. What inspired that? And by the way, it was a great introduction because the first people that I met at Tippecanoe Valley were the distinguished alumni of Tippecanoe yeah. Valley for one of the first classes. But let's talk a little bit about that and let's talk about the impact that's had on the school of you guys doing that every year. It's a very, very nice um, really a, a few days of affairs mm -hmm. with interviews and, and you've made sure though that it's not all hype. There's actually substance behind it because those distinguished alumni go into the schools and mm -hmm. actually talk to the students. So let's talk just a little bit about the distinguished alumni you know, program. It's, it's been kind of funny, Scott, because I think that uh, initially when people are asked to participate in that, they, they kind of wonder about, yeah, you know, is this going to be worth my time? And when they're done, they are very appreciative of it and they're very honored by it and I think a little bit humbled by it too. This all got started several years ago when Ron Newland um, came to, to me and uh, said, hey, here, here's what I'd like to do. And Ron is a 1976 graduate, Tiffany Valley High School. Ron is, uh, was actually, um, I think, the primary person responsible for building the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Yes. Ron is a doer. He gets things done. And <laughs> his vision was he really wanted to see us as a high school reconnect with our alumni. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the things that um, the offshoots of that conversation is the distinguished alumni. And Very nice. it has been a lot of fun. Um, I think we started that in maybe 2010. Okay. So we've had several classes. Um, it is really a, a nice way, first of all, to honor the alumni that have done some really amazing things. And we, we try not to just honor people that uh, have gone to college, um, but success is, comes in a lot of different forms. Yeah. So we've, we've honored folks that um, have stayed local. We try to make sure and do that because we don't want our kids to think that they have to leave the area to be successful. Right. So we've honored them, we've honored people that have moved uh, to other places and, and done amazing things. We've honored servicemen, we've honored entrepreneurs, just a lot of, a variety of, of folks. There and, has been, yes. Uh, the neat thing is, uh, the most important thing I think is when we have them come on, a f on Friday and spend time with the students at the high school and we are pretty specific with them about, we want you to share with these students um, just share your, your heart with them. Talk to them a little bit about your career. Most of them will say that, you know, when I was a student sitting in your seat, I had no idea that I'd be doing what I'm doing today. So what what is it that's important that you do right now as a student? And, and just trying to inspire them and encourage them and helping the kids see that the opportunities are here. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Help the kids see that the opportunities are here um, you just got to take advantage of them yeah. and work, work hard, um, do the right thing, make good decisions. So those are the messages the kids get and, and those are the things they hear from their teachers on a daily basis, mm -hmm. but they're also hearing these things from other people too. And I think it, um, the feedback we get from our kids is the students is that they really enjoy it. Um, it's inspiring for them. It's inspiring for our teachers to mm -hmm. see those folks come back and reconnect with teachers they had when they were there. It's a kind of a nice celebration for the community too, mm -hmm. to bring these folks back in and, and kind of honor them for what they've done since they left the high school. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, I really enjoy those two days. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know we've recognized nine or 10 people now every year for- it's Almost 10 years. Yeah, almost 10 years. So yeah. we've begun to gather a pretty good sized group of distinguished alumni. And um, that now is, is kind of, um, Ron's vision is kind of expanding a little bit, and this is probably something that you're not even aware of, Scott, but Please. we started what's called a Valley Hometown Fund yes. um, here with the foundation, and that has not grown the way we wanted it to, so we've decided this year that we're going to take on the old um, Seacrest Hackworth uh, celebrity basketball game that the Las Donas used to do. Yes. And they did that to build up an endowment for the Seacrest yes. uh, Hackworth Scholarship. Um, we hope to do the same thing, to use that to build up an endowment for the Valley Hometown Fund so that we have funds we can grant each year Great. to school and community organizations. And just last Friday, I got a call from Susie Light, who's the director of the foundation in Kosciuszko County. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, one of our alumni that lives in Florida had gotten notice of the, the game that we're going to have next week, the celebrity basketball games, and they had read about the endowment that we're starting here in Fulton County, and they said, well, why doesn't Kosciuszko County have one of those? And so that individual said, I'll give you $1,000 toward it, and I guess they have two others, and um, Susie seemed to think it wasn't going to be a problem at all to get an endowment started there in Kosciuszko County as well. No so kidding. we'll have that in both counties, and uh, excited about that because mm -hmm. that will be nice to have that in place um, knowing that money can be granted, funds can be granted yeah. uh, forever um, to community and school organizations. Well, that's an excellent thing. And again, this is, this is what we're talking about here. You get the local people with a great idea and you get some momentum and some, some, seer en some sincere energy behind it. And it just rolls and yeah. it just snowballs. So uh, one of the things that I like the most, just for a second on the distinguished alumni is the feedback that I've had from the students, mm -hmm. they, <clears throat> students in general, especially at that high school level, they're at that age where they don't want to be treated like a kid anymore. They want to be spoken to as an adult. All right. When the distinguished alumni come in, they do treat them like adults. Mm -hmm. They speak to them as peers. Mm -hmm. And you see the light bulbs in the room just firing with all these kids, yeah. the, some of whom may have not raised their hand for a couple of years to answer yeah. a question are asking questions of your distinguished alumni yeah. so it really is that blanket that covers the entrepreneur to the housewife the mm -hmm. businessman to the serviceman and everything mm -hmm. in between and it puts value on all of it mm -hmm. and that's one thing that i think and uh, this is this editorial by scott sager but that's one of the things i think is lacked in our country for the past while is that we are not valuing ourselves for all that we are. Mm -hmm. We're putting specifics on this, this or this, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be a yeah. pro basketball player to attain something, but it all has value. Um, that's a perfect segue for me to talk just a little bit about your vocational program over there. Mm -hmm. If you don't know this, Tippecanoe Valley has one of the, I would say, most r robust programs your students actually learn hands-on work specifically in the building trades uh, yes and every year or just about every year your students are out there physically building a house somewhere in your district every year every year are, it is. this year we're building a house out southwest of akron for Dwayne hack Dwayne and janet hackworth okay. and yes every year we build a home um, there have been a couple of times where they have remodeled homes yeah. and added on but uh, we have a, a waiting list right now about 10 years out Are you for that to happen. And yeah, we'll have a, a group of probably, uh, <clears throat> the size varies a little bit. I think this year Wes has, uh, the instructor is Wes Backus. Uh -huh. and I think Wes has probably 10, 11 kids in the morning group and then 10 or 11 kids in the afternoon wow. group. Uh, some of those kids, this is a second year for them. Some it's a first year. Okay. But yeah, it's from the ground up. Um, we don't do the, the concrete work, so someone else comes in and does sure. that. But basically build the rest of the home and it's it's a wonderful experience oh, for the kids uh, some of them will go on into construction mm -hmm. careers um, some of them will not um, but yet the skills that they learn when it comes time to roof a house fix a sink <laughs> you know do any of those kinds of things they'll have the knowledge they can they it's can amazing. do that so yes it's one of those programs that if we were to say well we're not going to do that next year uh, that would not be a popular decision yeah we um, are bringing back next year uh, an automotive technology program Excellent. for our high school. We had that, uh, in fact, I did that during the summer when I was a, between my junior and senior years. And um, when Rick Ralston, the instructor left, that program left, and we haven't had that for quite a while. And um, it's something that we need. So we've worked with our career center there in Warsaw. We're gonna have it at Valley. Um, we will have up to 30 kids and we're pretty confident we can fill it with 30. I bet. Um, and uh, excited about that because I think that's another opportunity for our students. We will have four high schoolers this year, Scott, that will graduate uh, from Ivy Tech in a ceremony at Notre Dame with a degree. Certification, I'm trying to think what it's, it's called. It, I can't give you the, the name of it now, but it uh, basically will um, has prepared them for the orthopedic industry. No kidding. Um, it's a two-year program offered through Ivy Tech and our Career Center. 
that these four boys now will they'll graduate from Notre Dame uh, Ivy Tech at Notre Dame before they graduate from high school and they'll have that certification <laughs> which will lead them right into the orthopedic industry so I mean those kids can walk into a really a pretty nice job that's so impressive with that and just you know those things are so important for our kids um, of course we're doing all the AP and the dual credit things that you need to do for those sure. college bound students mm -hmm. but not everybody needs to go to college not everybody wants to go to college mm -hmm. There are lots of careers out there for people that, um, you know, you've got to have some kind of training beyond high school, um, but it, it doesn't have to be a four-year degree. So we're, we're always looking for those opportunities. We, we've started running a bus uh, to their career center. Mm -hmm. They're in Warsaw every day so that more of our kids can take advantage of those things. They used to have to drive on their own, and, and some kids just couldn't do that because mm -hmm. of the expense. So now we transport them, and that number has risen, has grown because of that. Um, but that's, that's what our job is, I think, as educators, is to provide opportunities for our young people, find out where their talents and their interests lie, and then try to head them in that direction. And then yeah. it's up to them. Well, you, um, as well as anyone I've seen, sir, have kept your school system focused on the students. Um, you are building the future, as we yeah. say. And there's a lot of cliché to this, and we all have heard the clichés. But what I have seen, again, just a personal observation, I have seen you and your staff and i mike over at burkett is one of the most impressive um, and we yes. could talk for an hour just on him but you provide worth and value to every student in your school system no matter their skill levels yes. if they're willing to work with you you are more than willing to work with them and even sometimes when they're not willing to work with you <laughs> you're still willing to work with them and you're yeah. giving these kids such hope for the future and as i look into many student size and millennials in general are getting this label of apathetic or if they're not apathetic they're getting this idea that they can accept multiple a, a poly glot if you will of of ideas coming in at one place they can accept those but what i'm not seeing in a lot of the students in our area is hope plan feeling of validation or feeling of capability and again, you're not belittling a student because they prefer to hold a hammer rather than a pen. You're not belittling the student who says, I just need a little bit of college to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't need an eight-year tract. You've found a way to work it all together. And some of these plumbers are going to make more money than some of these lawyers. Oh, yeah. And we know this. <laughs> and there was a push, I would say, from the late, two th or late uh, 1990s through the early 2000s of the college track is the only thing that matters and schools retooled their entire programs for that. Tippecanoe Valley had some foresight to say, wait a minute, these kids can do other things. So to bring a shop class back into, or uh, an automotive class back into a high school, not too many are bringing them back. Some are still slashing those as programs yeah. that don't have value anymore. Yeah. So kudos to you again and your staff and your vision. Well, we. We feel that we need to reflect the needs of our community yeah. and uh, try to be in touch with, with what's important uh, within our community, and, and that's why we've done the things we've done. Well, excellent work, sir. So what's next for you? Let's talk about Brett Boggs for a moment. <laughs> you've, you've got children, adult children? I do. I have three, and uh, three grandkids. Okay. And they're, what, 12, 10, and 8 right now, so okay. they're, they're getting pretty busy in things, and yeah. uh, we'd like to we get to some things right now. They all live in the the Wakarusa and Apany area, so okay. it's not too far away, but uh, looking forward to spending a little bit more time with them, getting to do some things there. Okay. I have a nephew that uh, lives in Washington State, to almost to Canada, that we haven't been out to see him yet. They're going to have a little one here in April, so I think my wife and I would like to take some time to travel out there and see see them as well as to see the country in between. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking at some different things that uh, will keep me busy uh, yeah. part-time. I'm not looking for a full-time job, but I'd like to be busy at least a little bit and kind of pick and choose what I do. And um, so, you know, I've got some some feelers out there looking at some different things, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's time for me to step away. I think there's an opportunity out there now for uh, Mr. Conley to take over, and um, he's a good man, and he will do a great job at Valley. So I'm leaving things in good hands and uh, I think the school system is in, in pretty good shape at this point um, and I, I know it will stay that way it'll, it'll just continue to get better we've got a lot of good people there and 
very, very proud of the, the folks that we have in leadership positions. I think they will do well. Excellent. Well, again, Blaine Conley, uh, your assistant superintendent for a number of years, stepping into that role, was named recently to be the new, next superintendent. So you're keeping it in-house again. Yeah, there's a, a process that uh, the state requires us to go through. Mm -hmm. um, Monday night, there will be a, a formal hearing where if it, you know the public can come and question, ask about his contract, and then uh, the following Monday night, the 12th, I expect that the board will approve him as our superintendent. So um, that's good. We need to get that done now because there are other decisions that are going to need to be made um, because of that decision. And uh, that gives him the time that he needs to do those things. Now you'll be with us through the end of this school year? Yes, um, through the end of June. Okay. And then July 1 uh, is when Blaine will, will take over. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Well, we'll see uh, Mr. Boggs again over at uh, the graduation, which we cover here on RTC. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you there for that, if not beforehand. But thank you again for all you've done. We wish you nothing but the best. We thank you for the support you've given us and, and what you've instilled in those kids over at Tippecanoe Valley. Well, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Uh, those 40 years have gone pretty fast, and I've enjoyed almost every minute of it. <laughs> almost every minute of it. Very good. Well, Brett Boggs yeah. here, Superintendent, Tippecanoe Valley School Systems, a diehard over there at Tippecanoe Valley, and I'm sure he will be missed. But uh, more great things on the horizon as he's left them in great shape for the future. And so, uh, again, we thank you, Mr. Boggs. You're welcome, Scott. Thank right. you. Thanks for watching.